Hey everyone, this is Emmanuel, Certified Emotion Code, Body Code Practitioner, uh, also Chief Healing Officer of Inside Out Institute. It is Friday morning. The best thing to do in the morning is to check in on your subconscious, see what's happening and to what's holding you back. So I'm going to have a special guest on here. Actually, I'm going to go give her a call in the next few seconds here. Her name is Tammy Tyson. And uh, she volunteered actually just a couple of, um, like, like a few days ago. Um, we've been planning it for like weeks, but we just, you know, we're both very busy, but, uh, I know she's a very huge fan of the emotion code and body code. And I wanted to do a session. And for those of you who are not familiar with what the emotion code body code is, uh, I'm definitely going to explain it, uh, in the next few minutes here. So, uh, first of all, let's try to see if we can give her a call and then I'll try to put her on speakerphone so we can, uh, listen to her and you can kind of hear, um, who she is. And I'll give her a quick little intro and bio before we get started. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Doing good, doing good. So uh, so we're live now, and um, I just started the Facebook Live. And um, yeah, I just wanted to, to give you know everyone a bio about you, uh, just to kind of everyone can kind of see who you are. And um, the reality is, is that uh, energy healing is becoming way more, you know, popular. Um, I know a lot of athletes have been uh, using it. Uh, they have like their own private Reiki practitioner. Um, some am amazing football players or NHL hockey players. Also, um, hospitals have been using um, energy healing as well. Uh, they have their specific ones that they appreciate and they have certain... Uh, sort of departments that that they help out patients while they're healing from cancer, or different things, and so it's be it's becoming a, a growing trend, but it's not a phenomenon yet where everyone's using it and everyone's uh, utilizing how to be able to tap into their subconscious to see what could happen. And so, um, so if you don't mind, Tammy, I'll just do like a quick bio about you. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah that's okay. Okay, cool. So. Um, Tam, my, my goal is to make Tammy blush in the morning. So, so that's, that, that's the goal here. But no, she, um, so I have a little kind of uh, introduction here. So Tammy Tyson is the founder of Tyson Method. She's a certified trainer, nutritionist, bioresonance practitioner. Um, she's an inspirational leader. Tammy has been featured in many publications as an expert on TV as well as a public speaker. Uh, Tammy has a passion drive like seldom seen. She is determined to make a difference in the lives of girls and women across the globe. She is a homeschooling single mom raising three beautiful daughters who help her run Shine Dance Studio. Tammy has created numerous programs online and in person designed to promote getting healthy from the inside out. It's her love and passion for people that truly sets her apart. So, so that's her that's a little bit about Tammy and I'll just share really quick a little bit about myself and what I'll do Tammy is um cuz I just realized my phone's doesn't have the loudest speaker on there is if you do respond to me and people don't hear you, you'll probably hear me just echo you and say, oh, what she said was this, you know? And um, and so we'll we'll uh, try to see if we can uh, hear you. But just in case, for those of you who are, I don't want later on to say, hey, I didn't get to hear her that much. Well, I'll just repeat and echo what she says. Um, so basically, the, um, the, the first thing is that... Um, uh, what is the emotion code? So, um, so I've been a certified emotion code body code practitioner for about uh, seven seven years now, and uh, emotion code for about two years, um, emotion and body code for about five years. Um, I've been very fortunate that um, I was able to um, meet Dr. Bradley Nelson a couple of times. He's the founder of it uh, because I created a training program to help people go full time faster. So that's why him and I became pretty close. And um, what's interesting is I was able to go full time pretty quickly, um, even to the point where at least for five or six years, I was I was working with about 70 to 90 clients a week. So staying very busy in the field. And some people say, hey, man, you're a workaholic, but you know, you love what you do. Uh, really, time doesn't exist. It, become, it really does become an illusion, like people sometimes uh, say in the woke community, but it really does when you find out what you love to do. And, and I, that's, I just went to work and I loved helping people. And um, 
and I just uh, I found out that it, it is really one of the most powerful modalities I've ever seen. And the beautiful thing about it is the the chiropractor, uh, Dr. Brad, I'll just tell you a quick story about him. And then uh, and then we'll just dive in and do an energy healing for her. I'm so excited for Tammy. She says, hey, you know, I'm willing to be vulnerable. Uh, I'm willing to let things on the loose and just, you know, because sometimes I'll mention an age and emotion. And, and what's really great about this type of work is I used to have a, a mantra in our old practice, which is, um, less talk, more healing. So it's not like I'm a psychologist or we need to hear you know, essays of what's going on. What's beautiful about it is let's just get rid of it and actually get some healing done. And I think everyone's ready for that You know, because I feel like sometimes when you leave the psychologist or I, I've heard some of the worst uh, fights that have ever happened are coming back from a marriage counselor because she's triggered both of them or he's triggered both of them and and there's no release from the body. So they're both just kind of very reactive and that drive home is just, you know, just very rough if to, to say the least. And so, um, but basically, uh, Dr. Brad was a chiropractor and he was a chiropractor for over 20 years with a brick and mortar business, as he would say. And what happened was is he would always kind of ask for help before he gets started working with people. And people call that, you know, praying to the universe or to God, whatever you want to call it. Um, but he would just always ask for help in private before he met with clients. And what happened was is that uh, he started seeing a lot of clients who had some very um, chronic illnesses, chronic diseases. And so he started asking for a different, uh, different prayer, if you will, of like, how do I help these people who have chronic illnesses? Chiropractors, knowledge only can, can go so far. You know, and um, and sometimes two chiropractors notice that whenever they make readjustments, maybe you've experienced this before, but if you make an adjustment, sometimes you're back at the chiropractor the next day, and then the or sorry the next month, and you're just you know all of a sudden you have the same exact symptom, and then the chiropractor is adjusting you again, and he's like, why why is that? He's like, why can't I just adjust you, and then you never have to come back for that symptom? So he had all these questions, and then all of a sudden he started getting these downloads about how the body works, and what he found out is that. Um, you know, obviously in quantum physics world, we're all energy. And um, what's interesting is that uh, because we're all energy, um, more and more research, especially uh, in Europe and, and different other areas, is they've, they've even done scientific tests on how every part of your body has a certain frequency. Uh, it's producing a certain frequency. You know, the liver produces a different frequency from the heart. The heart produces a different frequency from the stomach. And what's interesting, but what, what's even more advanced that they haven't scientifically proven yet is that our bodies are producing emotional energy. So, for example, we're producing emotional energy the size of a tennis ball to a cantaloupe. And so picture these spheres of energy throughout the day that they're kind of being processed through our skin. So, for example, the liver produces anger, bitterness, guilt, hatred, resentment. So that's why when someone drinks way too much caffeine or way too much alcohol, their liver is, is kind of fatty. It's overworking itself and it can produce that emotional energy more readily. And so that they can feel that anger, bitterness, guilt, hatred, resentment a lot faster. And so what's interesting is that all our organs and glands are producing emotional energies. Dr. Brad made a very kind of simple, um, sophisticated chart of just 60 emotions that are produced by our organs and glands. In fact, um, if some of you guys, I don't, I don't want to outdate myself, but Tammy, you probably know um, uh, Christopher Reeve. Does that name kind of sound familiar? Uh, of course. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, whenever I say Christopher Reeve, sound familiar? Someone says, no, I don't know. I'm like, oh, no. Uh, but but Christopher Reeve, in my opinion, is the real Superman. Okay. And that's a whole nother session and debate. But, um, you know, if, if Christopher Reeve had the technology that we have now, that would be some pretty amazing movie magic. But, but Christopher Reeve, I believe, was the, the real Superman. And, um, and what happened was is that his wife um, died of lung cancer uh, very soon after he became a paraplegic. And so, so the Western world is like, I have no idea why she died of cancer so quickly, lung cancer. Uh, she didn't smoke cigarettes. Um, her family doesn't have any lung cancer. They didn't smoke cigarettes. Christopher Reeve didn't smoke. So why the lung cancer and why so quickly after Christopher Reeve uh, became injured? And the answer to Western medicine is we don't know. And, um, and Dr. Brad, he, he has this theory where he says, well, if you look at what the lung produces, it's, it's grief. 
And these trapped emotions, basically what happens is, so imagine throughout the day, you're going throughout the day and you're just feeling an emotion. You know how when you get angry or when you get sad, um, the energy kind of goes, it's a picture like your energy going through the skin, this little ball of energy going through your skin. And then all of a sudden it leaves the skin. And that's when you kind of quote unquote, get over it. You know, and you're just like, yeah, I'm like not crying anymore, or yeah, I'm not angry anymore. I've always wondered what, where, where is that body time clock that says, okay, you're done, you're done crying, or you're done angry, you're done being angry. I, I never knew we even had one, but really now it makes more sense. If these emotional energies are processing through your skin, there's a point where it leaves your body, and then you're over it because you're not feeling that emotion anymore. The problem is, is that some of these emotions are so overcharged and uh, heavy that for whatever reason, they get trapped and they're called trapped emotions. And what happens is, is with, let's say, the wife of, of, of uh, Christopher Reeve, what happens was is that perhaps the lung was producing these emotional energies of grief. They were so strong that they stayed in the body and they can sometimes swarm to different parts of the body, but most likely they, they go to the lung where it was produced. And if enough trapped emotions go around the lung, it can create disease and then can even produce cancer. Um, Dr. Brad believes that 80 to 90 percent of the reasons why we have symptoms in our body is due to trapped emotions. So this makes it really interesting. Now, instead of we live in a world where it's just like, just take medication, whatever, we technically live in a world of suppression or band-aid therapy, and we're not really looking at what's the root cause. And that's why we have to keep being dependent on something that sort of numbs us or um, just kind of keeps things at bay. But what we do is we actually try to find out what is the true root cause. At the end of the day, it really is emotional energies. And so that's kind of what we do here. And so the last thing I want to share with you before we get started here, because I know Tammy's excited. Hopefully, it's Friday morning. So Tammy, are you excited to do a session here? Or? Very excited, yes. Very, okay, she said very excited, yes. Okay, so what we're going to do is this, is let's, um, um, what we could do is this, is let's, Let's find out how do how do we do this? For example, Tammy, Tammy, where do you live, by the way? I live in Canada, Manitoba. Okay, if you live in Canada, okay. So I live in Utah. Okay, so this is kind of uh, we're obviously very far apart. Now, if Tammy was here in person, what I would be doing is I would be pushing down on her arm and asking her questions. And her arm, if some of you guys know applied kinesiology or muscle testing, it's been around since the 40s or 1940s, 1950s. Um, you know, chiropractors used it to find misalignments in the body. That's how I would find out of like, you know, what's going on with her body. Now, um, I would use a magnet uh, to be able to release energy from her body because what Dr. Brad found out uh, is that um, magnets kind of magnify your intention and your intention to remove something from the body. Now, how's, however he was inspired that whenever it's a regular trapped emotion, you swipe three times. And if it's inherited, it's 10 times. I don't know. But I just know that it works. And so, um, so basically, that's how we would do it down in person. Now, the way we're going to do it is we're going to do it via proxy. So proxy is really interesting. It's almost like sending a, a, like an a energetic telephone cord to Tammy. And I start muscle testing using my fingers called the ring and ring method. There's many different sort of self muscle testing you know, methods. But I use the ring and ring. And I've been using it for so many years. And it just for me, it just works the best. And what's going to happen is that, um, you know, I use that. And then instead of me getting answers for myself, because she gave me permission to connect with her, now I get answers for her. And what's also interesting is that instead of using a magnet on her back, um, I use it on myself. And I can, the, I use it on this thing called the governing meridian. If you want to Google that, it's basically like, it's, it's kind of like the motherboard of all these, um, it's, it's kind of like in Chinese acupuncture. It's, it's, it's a line, I call it like a freeway of energy that goes from the top of your lip all the way back to your spine. And um, as long as you're kind of rubbing in that area, um, then you're good to go. And so I don't, obviously I can't reach my back. So sometimes I just swipe my head, you know, just kind of like as if I'm combing my hair back and I, and it has the same exact effect as if she was meeting with me in person. I know it sounds really far fetched, but you have to understand that we're all, we're all connected energetically and it's all about intention. And some people might say at this point, well, maybe this is a placebo effect, you know, which is nothing wrong with placebo effect. But um, the thing is, is that I work with animals and I work with children. And unfortunately, I don't speak dog. Um, but, and unfortunately, the, the baby is usually very far away from me. 
So, and if the baby starts ha- stops having night terrors or, uh, you know, doesn't have any uh, food allergies anymore or is way more happy and positive or sleeps away from the mom and is okay and they notice those differences, again, there's no placebo effect. So it kind of almost proves that there's energies being released from that animal or from the child. So this isn't really like like sort of like positive talk therapy. This is really... The goal is to remove specific energies to help the person not have those symptoms anymore. And the last thing I want to share with you before we get started is, um, you know, I- I'm going to enjoy working with Tammy because I know Tammy has really big goals. You know, I work with all types of people, people stay at home mom or like her. She's not just, a, she's not just someone who just homeschools, which again, could be very stressful. Um, but she does other things, you know, she's, she's very active in the world and providing value, you know, and, and, um, but I work with, you know, very successful men. I work with single dads. I, I work with dogs. I work with kids. I mean, anyone can actually use this, um, and to their own benefit. So let's get started here. And, uh, Tammy, if you want, let me see. Um, Let's start off with this. I'm just going to kind of get some information from you so, and then we can get started. So first of all, um, how young are you? Let's ask you that real quick. 48. 48. Okay. And then, um, (laughs) okay. So, okay. So uh, we'll just stick with 48. Um, And then I was going to ask you, um, maybe you could do me a small favor. Maybe you can stand up real quick and maybe you can kind of move around, a, move, maybe you can move around a little bit. Um, you know, move around your, your, uh, move, move around your shoulders. Um, actually, you know what? Give me one second here. I think, I think maybe I could, let's try to see if I can put you on my speaker. So hold on one second here. Um, let me see. I'm going to, I'm going to try to make it so I can hear you. I'm going to like do some cool bootlegging. So, this is what I'll do is, um, are you on a computer and also on a on a phone? Um, yes. Okay, good. Okay, good. So what I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to go on, uh, uh, I'm going to see, do you have FaceTime, by the way? I do. You do? Okay. I'm just going to, I'm trying to figure out how I can, I can call you maybe through my computer. Don't know if I can call you through Facebook because I'm using it. Um, but, um, yeah, I think maybe I can call you on FaceTime. So, um, so let me try doing that real quick. I just, like I said, it'd be cool if I can, um, actually, um, hear you. Um, so give me one second here. Okay. So, yeah, so let's, let's try to see if we can do this. Um, I'll, I'll try to call you back, um, in like the next uh, two seconds and then, um, and then we'll see if I can connect with you. Okay. All right, guys, hold on real tight, and let's see if I can can reach out to her real quick. Um, okay, so let's see. Give me one second, guys. Thank you guys for waiting. Hello? Hey, hi. Whoa, how are you on my phone here? Um, wait a minute. What's going on here? <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, huh. Wait, say hi again. Hi. Are you on my are you on my computer? Hello, can you say something again? What well, say hi one more time? Okay. 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 There we go. Okay. I I know why. I know why this is the case. Okay. So give me one second here. Um, Let me do this. Okay. Say hi one more time. Okay. Now they can't hear you. Okay. I see what's going on here. All right. Well, uh, this may not work that I thought it was going to work, but let's, it's okay. No worries. Um, what we'll do is I'll call you back on the phone again and then I'll, uh, I may be able to put you on my Bluetooth for my phone, for my speaker. Let's try this one last time. Okay. So I'll call you right back. Okay. 
All right, let's 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 try one more thing. I'm kind of a kind of a fixer upper, if you will. You know, I don't I don't really give up too easily. You know, so let's try this one last thing here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna put on put it on speaker. So, uh, but not just any speaker, like my big speakers. Let's see if this works out. Might be kind of cool to hear her voice. If not, this will be the last attempt, guys, and then we'll go ahead and get the session started here. So, uh, let me see. This should work though. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna call her right now. Hey. Um, okay, so that didn't really work, but um, I tried. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no worries. Okay, so let's let's get started here. Um, so. Let me, uh, so I had, I think I have your information here. Okay. So if you can do me a favor, just go ahead and stand up real quick. And, um, if you can, um, go ahead and just kind of move around a little bit, just move your, your neck, move your shoulders. See what I'm doing here is I, I, sometimes you never know. She may have a place where she feels tension or tightness or pain. We all have some area where like, we wouldn't mind if like, you know, Fabio gave us a massage or, or, you know, or your you know, husband or wife gave you a massage because you're just like, oh, it's always tense or tight. And, and you never know. It could just be trapped emotions in that area. That's kind of always a good place to start with a new person. Um, not that she's new, but just for you guys to see that um, lowering down pain is a very tangible uh, positive symptom that can come from this, but that's not what I want to work on. I'm going to work on something way deeper, like maybe like what's the biggest block Tammy has, and then I want to just dive right in there and see what we really find. So, um, but Tammy, maybe you could do me a favor. You can just uh, tell me like, do you have any area where you just feel, oh yeah, my neck is tight, or my shoulders, or my lower back, or my hip? Where where is it for you? My hip. Your hip, okay. Is it, is it the left hip, yeah. or the left hip, or right side, or both? Uh -huh. Both. Oh, both. Okay. So both. So she said both. Um, now, do me a small favor. From a scale from 1 to 10, so 10 being like really, really annoying and 1 just, eh, just a little bit there, what number would you give the hip? Uh, a 5. A 5. Okay. Yeah. So she's saying both sides are a 5. Okay. And um, so let's do this. And uh, we got that. And um, yeah, so let's start off with that first. And then the second thing I want to ask is, um, you know, what is the one? Of, what is the major block that you have right now? And again, Tammy, here's what we'll do. We'll have some fun with this because this is supposed to be fun. I don't, I don't, I don't like make this too serious. But, um, but let let's make a like a code word. I'm trying to remember what's what's the term for that that people say. It's like, um, do you know? Oh, a safe word. <laughs> let's make a safe word. <laughs> okay, just in case. And and and, and Tammy, I'm gonna try to like you know have her not use this word too much but hey like if just push comes to shove there's a safe word and we'll just say like um there's a really cheesy song that like uh that i keep the the pineapple apple pen i don't know if you've heard of it it's super cheesy but we'll just say we'll just say um apple pen okay how about apple pen can you remember that Okay, cool. So because it's just silly, you know, and, and so it, it, the only reason why you would say Apple Pen is because you're like, yep, I know what that's all about. Don't really want to even talk about it. It's like, okay, cool. You're like, you're like, oh, yeah, Apple Pen. It's like, okay, cool. Let's just get rid of it. And that's just kind of cool. You can keep it as private as you want. But like I asked him, like, oh, if you can just be more open and, you know, just kind of, you know, nothing to hide here. No one's judging you. So um, and, and even then I'll tell her if you can just keep it within like one or two sentences like, oh, I think this has to do with this or oh, yeah, it's either this or this. Pretty sure you see how that's pretty, pretty short. So we like to keep it that short typically in sessions, just one or two, two sentences or she can pull the uh, Apple pen and all right, just let's, let's get rid of it. You don't want to talk about it. Cool. And, uh, and we just move on, you know, so that's what's kind of uh, beneficial about this work. Um, but yeah, so what's what's a major thing holding you back? And, you know, it could be emotional, could be a relationship, could be abundance. And that's what the body code can kind of see what's really going on. You'll be surprised what energies are kind of holding us all back, you know, from like living our best life. It's not just about getting your liver right or getting your neck to not hurt. This body code is, I call the limitless pill of our century. I've helped people multiply their income. I've helped people fix their relationship with their partner. I've seen people connect with their siblings again or have um, memorized faster or have higher intuition or get clarity of their mission. I mean, anything you could think of that you're like, I wish I could have the superpower. I wish I can speak in front of thousands of people. I've been shy my whole life. 
trust me, the body code can figure out why you are shy and why you can't speak to people. So anything else, anything you want to kind of share, Tammy, that maybe some major blocks? Oh, okay. abundance, and then and then uh, like like moving forward or moving on from a specific trauma or. or... Um, not letting go from the trauma in my past. There's just there's a lot. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So not letting go from trauma in the past. Something something that I also do on here too is um you know is uh, there's a couple of ways you can work abundance. Now watch this. So your subconscious, uh, if you watch the movie Inception, there was a part where uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is walking around with the girl in his dream, and all of a sudden they start uh, attacking her. I don't know if you guys remember that really cool part. So what's really happening is that um, uh, they start realizing that there's like a spectator in his dream, and they're looking at her kind of funny, like, who are you? You know, And, um, and she's, this is really funny. This is what she said. She says, can you tell your subconscious to cool it? Like, you know, and he, he says, I can't, it's my subconscious. And, and it's, it's, it, that's really what our subconscious was meant to do. If you, if you learn anything from this session, it's that your subconscious is meant for you to, to stay safe. It's to keep you safe. Um, and really the problem is, is that throughout our life we receive trauma. So then it goes, oh yeah, abundance. Whoa. Have, do you know how much trauma you've, you've created in, in trying to build abundance? Yeah, we don't do that anymore because we don't want to produce more trauma. It's trying to keep you safe from it. So what I do is I go in there and I'm like, let's just erase those. Let's just completely remove those energies that were produced. So then that way your body's way more open to that subject. Does that make sense? So um, for example, abundance, I could do a couple of things here. And I'll just show you some samples of some quality body code sessions you can do. Number one is you can say, do you feel safe with financial abundance? You know, So that's something I can muscle test later on. And if your body says no, it's like, nah, not really. Well, then I would, I would help you to get safe by the end of our session. So instead of you walking around, Tammy, with your arms closed, and you think you're walking around with your arms open financially, you haven't even seen it. Maybe, and you could be, you could be a millionaire and you, you're still walking around with your arms closed, but you're not a billionaire until you keep your feel safe with financial abundance. So it doesn't matter if you're already doing very well in life. This could even maximize it even more. And so, for example, do you feel safe with financial abundance? That's a good one. Another one is called abundance goal. Imagine this. How many, um, Tammy, I, I, Tammy would probably know in the back of her mind uh, because she's a very uh, powerful entrepreneur is like, hey, you know, how much income do you want to make? How much time do you want to put into it? And then um, and then, what do you want to preserve no matter how busy you get? That's called an abundance goal. And what's really powerful with this is that imagine I work with her and um, you know she says, okay, um, these, these are my goals. Let me ask, and then I'm going to ask her body how much her body believes it. How powerful is that? So she may tell me that goal and if she was here in person, I'd be like, go ahead and put out your arm and, and let's see if your body believes it. Her arm would go down. And it doesn't mean that she doesn't believe it completely. So that's why I go, hey, how much does your body believe it? Well, only 23%. So I would remove energies until her arm is strong that she believes it 100%. All of a sudden, she's attracting everything she wants in her abundance goal. So that's called abundance goal. There's also called abundance mode. I don't want to go into all of these because, uh, you know, but... Abundance mode, long story short, is like we have different magnets. We have the abundance magnet, we have the stagnant magnet, and we have the lack magnet. These, these are real things. I know, I know very successful people that have high abundance magnet, but they also like a high abundance mode, but they also have a high lack mode. You probably have uh, that, that person who's like, man, I make a lot of money, but something always shows up that takes my money away. It's like I can't. It's like as soon as it comes in, it goes out. As as, okay, that's somebody who has high abundance mode and high lack mode. And they don't know that there's energies that are producing that, real energies. And um, so if I remove them, all of a sudden they're now keeping their money. They're not, they're not losing it anymore. Um, so I'll just ask her body, hey, what do we really need to work on? Is it abundance mode? Is it abundance goal? Is it finance? Do you feel safe or abundance in general? What is it? Then I can also ask, not letting go from trauma in the past, I can say, hey, higher self, what does she? What would be the most beneficial for her 
to really move forward in life, which trauma needs to be released. And then her body would choose for her. I'll be like, oh, these are heavy and she doesn't even know it or maybe she does know it and we're going to get rid of it right now. Okay, so but let's work on her on her hips real quick. Let's see if maybe we can uh, make her feel some relief there. So Tammy, let's go ahead and let's just take uh, 10 seconds. We'll just, um, you know, ask for some help in our mind. You know, people meditate for 10 seconds and then we'll uh, we'll get started here. Sound good? Okay, so let's do this real quick. Okay, so um, so where do we start? Okay, so we'll go, we're going to go to the emotion code chart here. So you guys can look on the screen. Uh, here's the chart, and um, I'm just going to muscle test her. So I'm going to say, first of all, like if, if you were, you know, if I were to be very methodical about it, I would say my name is Tammy. My name is Emmanuel. It says no. See, so now we're locked in. You see, so now I'm getting answers for Tammy, not for myself. So I'll just say trapped emotions uh, for the hips, okay? So let's just ask, are there any, uh, let's just start with the body code first. I'm sorry, emotion code first. Let's say, are there any trapped emotions that are causing you to have tension or tightness around the hips area? Your body said yes. Okay, so let's see what the first one is here. Yeah, okay, so the first thing that comes up is, is there's a dread, okay? I'm going to say, where is this dread from? And like I said, Tammy, we're going to have some fun here. I'll just mention the age. And if anything kind of pops up in your head, just just let me know. But let me see where this came from. Let me see. So is it 48? Your body's like, no. Is it less than 48? It is. So 48, 40, 30, 20, 20, 21, 22. So we're at 21, you know? And this is always give or take a year, you know? So it could be 22. It could be 20. Well, what kind of rings a bell? Maybe a moment of dread. Around this. What's the first thing that kind of rings a bell around that time. Is it friends, family, relationships, school, work? Um, well, it's been just close to when my brother and sister died. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she was talking, uh, you, you said your brother and sister passed away? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So does see anything to do with that at all? Yeah, it is. And you, and you never know. This could have been dread, um, you know, visitations in the hospital or dread, you know, going to their funeral, like there could have been some like, I, this is just so hard. I, I, I'm I, dreading this, you know? So um, so let me go ahead and re uh, let me ask real quick, is that what it has to do with? It does. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this dread here. I'll say, is there, I'm sorry to hear about that, by the way. And I'll say, is there another trapped emotion here? There is. Okay, let's see what the next one is. Okay, so there's an effort unreceived. And for right now, uh, Tammy, you can just sit down, relax. You don't have to, and like, you don't have to move your hips. Just kind of like let it relax. Then I'll tell you when to stand up, walk around, and we'll have you check your hips here. So effort unreceived. So that's that whole idea of like, here I go again, putting effort into something, but eh, it's not really working out the way I want it, you know, or maybe at the time, timeliness that I want it. So where did this come from? Let's see, are you at 48? No, 48, 40, 30. So it's around the 30s. 33, 1, 32, 33, 34. So it's around 33. This is like give or take, right? So it could be 34, it could be 32. Anything kind of ring a bell, Tammy, with that, that maybe you're like um, putting a lot of effort here in this or in someone or in something, but maybe it's not panning out kind of like you wanted it. Yeah my marriage oh your marriage okay cool all right so uh, well, look look how look how cool tammy is she just said one sentence she's like marriage it's like all right well uh, th does she need to say more no does she, if she wants to sure but the thing is is watch if i ask see if i sometimes if i ask her body this, again i'm doing this just to kind of prove um the validity of this work so that's why i'm kind of asking her more pointed questions like in the first intro session i usually do a lot of like age emotion age emotion afterwards sometimes my clients are like we don't have to talk about that history let's just get rid of it you know so um but right now i just want to do this to kind of prove to you that she'll start she's her intuition is going to start tapping into memories and go oh yeah um first thing that popped up in my head was just marriage so let me just confirm with her body i'll say is that what it has to do with it does so i'm just going to remove this effort unreceived here and we release that. It's another trapped emotion here. There is. Let's see what else we find here. Okay, the next one is a discouragement. So like someone or something letting you down, right? So let me see where this one comes from. Uh, let me see. Uh, 14, 14, 10, 9, 8, 9, 5, 4, 3, 2. This is interesting. This is three years old, right? And you might be like, how is a little Tammy discouraged at three? That's kind of like discouraged that maybe someone didn't put the diaper on right. Well, what's going on here, right? But this gets very interesting. So it's not 
it's probably not her. Okay. Um, and it's probably not shared and, and shared. What it means is that she felt it and someone else felt it at the same time. Um, and I can ask, I'll just double check. I mean, kids do have feelings very early. And I'll say, is this a shared one? No, uh, more likely it's what they call an absorbed one. Is this absorbed? It is. Uh, is this female male? Um, this is a, this is a male female. No. Yeah. So this is some type of male in the home. Who, who were the men around you at the house, Tammy? Like who were they? Um, was it your dad or your brother? Who, who was around at, around you at three? Yeah, would have been there. My brother and my dad. Okay. Yeah. So I can just quickly ask him like, is this a, is this a brother thing or, or a dad thing? Yeah. It's just, it's just a dad thing. Right. So there could have been a day where the dad felt let down or for whatever reason. And this, and we don't have to get too personal because you know, Tammy might not know what the dad was going through. Some, some people do, but it doesn't really matter. The thing is that she, she absorbed it from the dad. Dad was just having a day where he felt discouraged. Could have been work, could have been his relationship, who knows. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this discouragement here that you basically absorb. It's kind of like we're like a little sponge there. I'll say there's another trapped emotion here. There is. Let's see what the next one is. Yeah, there's a uh, feeling helplessness, okay? So helplessness, where does this come from? Let's see, 48, 40, 40, 43 cent. Uh, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. Yeah, this is just uh, 43. So it is, this is five years ago, uh, 2016-ish. Could be 2017, 2015, around there. But anything that maybe somewhere in your life, you're like, yeah, I feel kind of helpless here. Can't Can't do much about this. Anything kind of... Ring a bell. Is this relationship, work related, family stuff? From my ex husband, for You're, sure. Okay. Okay. So, sorry. I, I cut you off there. You said ex husband, and go ahead. What'd you say? Yeah. During that time, it was a very, I was, yeah, I felt very helpless. Okay. Okay. So, basically, helpless in the situation with your ex husband. Okay. Anything to do with that at all? Perfect. Your body said yes. Let's go ahead and remove this helplessness here. Okay. Let's see. Is there another uh, trapped emotion here? And your body says no. Is there is there a hidden one? Body said yes. So sometimes there's hidden trapped emotions. And I always make jokes about it. I'm just like, aren't you guys all technically hidden? But okay. So there's a hidden trapped emotion here. Let's see what emotion this is. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So there's a rejection here. Okay. So rejection. Where'd you get this one? Let's see. 48, 40, 30, 20, 40, 40, 30, 20. 25. This this is around 24. So this could be 25, 23. Anything kind of ring a bell where you might have either you were rejecting something, like you were pushing something away, or maybe you felt rejected uh, around that time. Uh, it could have been rejecting a business, rejecting an idea, or rejecting someone, or again, maybe you were you were feeling rejected. Anything kind of ring a bell around 24? It could be 25, 23, around there. Thinking it was. Probably that's when I was like full on into like, um, what do I want to say? Like get changing my career, career path. Like I was into modeling and like there was a lot of rejection in modeling. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Probably that. Yeah. So modeling journey and perhaps getting rejected because that, that is, I mean, I think models are very used to that. Like, oh, I thought I was going to get that gig. I didn't, you know, similar to like an, like an actor, right? Like an actor who's getting a callback, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, okay. I was doing both, and so, yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let me just ask your body. Anything to do with uh, that at all? Perfect. Your body said, yeah, let's go and remove this rejection here. I'll say, is there another uh, hidden trapped emotion here? And um, body says no. So so do me a quick favor, Tammy. Go ahead and take a deep breath in real quick, okay? And then go ahead and um, go ahead and walk around, um, you know, like maybe like seven or eight steps, you know? And then uh, after this is what a chiropractor typically does. Like whenever you get a alignment, just go ahead and walk around, and it's just to kind of like get things back into place. You know, kind of like you know, a, um, um, trying to uh, like acclimate the body in a way. So so she's walking around, and then um, go ahead and check your hips, see if they feel a little bit lighter, more. I know you said they were like a five. I just want to see if they've moved a little bit or it feels more relaxed there. My left one feels completely, completely loose. Okay, so and the my right. So, Okay. And the right one, how's the, how's the right one doing? Well, it's funny because before I felt it more on the inner inside of my hip, and uh-huh. now I kind of just feel it on the outside of my hip. Okay. In a different place. Sure. But, yeah. So, so the, you said, but, but so, so now, so the, le- uh, the left one is like a zero, 
And on the right yeah. side, the right side, what number would you give that right now? Um, probably a two. It's uh, almost, yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. So now, now, now watch this. I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist a little bit and my, my, my OCD is really kicking in right now. So, um, so, so, you know, especially people who say like, yeah, my, my pain went down, went down to like a point zero two. I'm like, eh. like just, they don't know. My client doesn't know. I stay up till four o'clock in the morning, shaking in my bed saying like point zero two, like screaming to myself. Um, I'm just joking. It's not, it's not that bad, but, um, but anyway, the point is, is that, yeah, she's got a two. So now there's two things that could be happening here. So either I ask, I can ask her body, is this part of her processing? Like, you know, does this, is this, is this because, um, her body's still acclimating and basically in two hours, the right pain will go down to a zero or does the, is the body saying, Hey, can you just work on this real quick? There's just something left. So let's just ask the body. I'll just say, Hey, is this like part of her processing? Is this, is this, um, is this too about to go down right now? Or is there something, um, it says no. So I'm saying, is there something that your body needs to work on just right now real quick? It does. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and, um, let's go to the homepage. Now I'm going to use the body code. So if you guys can see here, um, that, um, here's the chart here. Okay. And, um, so I can make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so I'm just going to ask, you know, what can I release here to kind of help that area out? Let's see what it says here. Okay, so now we're going here to the uh, circuits or systems. Okay, let's see what this has to do with here. Okay, so it's in the systems area. And now we got this. Look how cool this is, guys. If you guys are all watching this, uh, is you know it's got the whole system in the of the body right here. So the question is, where do we go? And I'm and, and I'm just muscle testing. Her body's telling me where to go on these charts here, and um, so I have no idea where we're gonna go. Um, okay, it's saying something in the muscular system. That's interesting. Okay, so it's not the skeletal system. Okay, so let's go here, and then uh, let's let's see where do we need to go from here. Um, yeah, it's like in the ab, ab, abdominal muscle here. That's what's going on. Okay, so we're here, and uh, what do we need to do on this area here? Let's see what it says. Yep, so for her, it's the, if you look on this uh, left side over here, it's the transverse abdominus. So there's something going on with that one there. Um, now I'm gonna, now you never know, could be on the left side and maybe the right side is compensating, could be on the right side, that's where it is. So it does say, you know, do we need to know which side this imbalance is on? It says, yeah, is on the, is it on the, is it on the left side? No, it's on the right side. Yeah, so it is on the right side. So now the magic question is, what's causing that? Is there an associated imbalance that's causing this? Her body said yes. So now where do we go from here? Let's see. So we have to find out what's below it that's kind of bothering it. There's some type of energy here. Um... There's something post-traumatic and um, okay. So you guys see this little person screaming here? Uh, that's called the physical emotional shock. So um, uh, Tammy, you've probably had you know a moment where either you were very stressed out or um, something happened that kind of shocked you that you're like, whoa, didn't expect that to happen. You know, and we get those from time. Like something happens to you left field. It's like, you, know, you get a text message from your partner. You're like, is he serious? Did he? Did he really say that? You know, that that's it's almost like a train hitting you, and you're just like, and it's a, it's like the t technically what this is means it's saying that the train not only hit you, but like the train is like you know, uh, like tr parts of the train are still in your body. <laughs> that's kind of what physical emotional shock is. So if I say, is there something below this at all? Your body said no. Is there something hidden? No. So the question is, is uh, let's just see where did, where did it come from? Let's see, 48, 40, 30, 20, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's around 13. Yeah. So anything kind of ring a bell around 13 where maybe you were stressed out about something or something happened to you or like, just like, whoa, didn't know that was going to happen. Like that came out of left field. Anything kind of ring a bell? Could be 14, could be 12, but around there. 30. Is this more of a home life stuff or is this school? What do you, th what do you think? Could have been either, but that's when my dad, we actually lost our home. My oh. grandpa sold it to dad, so we had nowhere to live for the summer. So I think that was it. Like, yeah. We lost our family. So if if you if you guys notice, she went straight to like a, a specific memory, right? She she basically was like, yeah, this has to be a home thing. Uh, she lost a home, right? So and that could be very shocking. Shocking, like for example, it could have been the the moment where the dad told her and said, okay, we're not going to have like have a house for like a little bit here, and you're just like, are you serious? Like you know, and that's the shock, you know. Let me ask if that's what it is. Um, 
Let's see, is that what it is at all? It is. So, and there's nothing below it though. No, there's nothing hidden below it. Sometimes there's something below it. It's, there's nothing there. So I'm going to remove this physical emotional shock. I'll say is the transverse abdominus happy now? It says no. There's, there's just there's still something left. Okay, so let's keep digging here. Um, there's another energy here. And uh, okay, there's something mental here. Um, let's see what this is. Um, yeah, there's, there's like a will to. So, what, so you're, you're probably wondering, what is a will to? Uh, my, my kid's so cute. Um, we see this little person. Sta um, <laughs> this is how innocent kids are. Uh, this is a person on a on a top of a building about to jump off. If you guys notice that. Um, but my 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 son is so cute, Hayden. He was just like, why is there a giant um, on a freeway? I'm like, no, that's not a giant. Anyway, but it was just really cute. Anyway, so he said. Um, there's a will to. Now, what is a will to? A will to is like when you're going through rough times that you're willing to do something at that time during that very rough patch. But then the rough patch goes away and then you're like, your body still maintains the will to, which can influence your thoughts, your behaviors, your relationships, because you're still willing to do something, but it's not really helping you. It's like it only kind of worked while you were in that uh, sort of gloom area. So let me find out what this is. So the question is, um, will, will to what? So let's kind of look into this. Uh, will to. Okay. So this one is will to take on others' responsibilities. That's interesting. So will to take on others' responsibilities. Now, you're a mom, so, I mean, you probably are very familiar with that. But let me find out. Uh, where did this come from? Maybe you might remember what this is all about. Let me see. Is this uh, 48, 40, 30, 40, 30? It's around 35, like give or take. Uh, let me ask this question first. Is there something below this at all? No. Anything hidden? It, it says no. So uh, anything kind of ring a bell around that, around 35, where you're like kind of willing to take somebody else's responsibility, like somebody was slacking maybe in your life. Could have been a family member. Could have been your ex. Could have been relationships. What's going on with will to take on others' responsibilities? Yeah, then it probably was a relationship. Then that's very typical of me. I I take everybody's responsibilities on okay. myself. Got it, got it. Yeah, um, you're you're the virtuous like one it. thinking about other people, and you're like, fine, you won't do it, I'll do it. You know. So let me see any anything to do with that at all. But I said yes. But see, watch this though. See, um, I'm gonna release this. I'm gonna say, do you have us anymore? Her body says no. Now, what's interesting is that, um, you know, could this hurt her in her life right now? Absolutely. Because what happens is, is that, you know, she, what if she's trying to build a team for her business? She has a team of people. There's something deep down in her subconscious where she's like, well, if she doesn't do it, then I'll just do it myself. And then what happens is, is maybe that she's not respecting her own boundaries. Then her company isn't expanding the way she wants to because she's too busy taking on others' responsibility. Does that kind of make sense? Anyone that knows me knows that this is a huge issue for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but see, it's not It's not her though. See, that's this is the cool part, guys, is that parts of your character that you're like, I have a tendency to do this or I have a tendency to do that. Like this is, you know, really it's just programmed. How cool is that? It's like there's real, if we remove the energy, the tendency goes away. And that's what's really powerful about this is that her character will only improve because now she'll be like, no, I know how to delegate. And yeah, you need to respect my boundaries and then watch her just everything flourish more. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, will to take under this responsibility. I'll say, is there anything else affecting the transverse abdominus? And her body says, no. Anything hidden? No. Let's do a quick reset and uh, realignment of that transverse abdominus. Is there anything else still affecting that area there? Yeah, your body says, no. Anything hidden? So go ahead and, uh, Tammy, go ahead and take a deep breath. Uh, don't check your right hip yet. Go ahead and walk around. Um, Walk around a few steps, you know, eight or nine steps, okay? Yeah. And then after you walk around, uh, let's go ahead and uh, check your right hip. See if it feels a bit lighter, more relaxed there. Yeah, it totally does. Cool. Yeah, completely. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, and then, and then, even the Sioux watch. Even if you ignore the, but by the way, people, like, 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 uh, I, my, my face um, is like, I'm, I'm still, I still get happy about this because it's like. I hate seeing people deal with pain. You know, I just, I don't, I don't like it. It, 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 it does kind of put, um, you, some of you guys who are listening, maybe you have a chronic pain that you're like, I, like my neck is so bad. I hate going, it's not that I hate going to work, but I hate going to work with my neck pain, you know, or maybe I'm not really mad at my wife. 
it's just that I have so much pain in my body that like I take I have to take it out on somebody. You see, so I just don't like pain at all. I'm just not a fan of it. So, and the cool thing about this is that we worked on some emotional stuff, you know. So, she's Tammy's not only getting physically um, helped here; she's getting. It, we had to work on the emotions, and one of the things that we did right now too is something that psychologists talk about called uh, neutralizing. See, it's a very fancy, cool word that that psychologists like to use and, and much respect to what they do in their practice. But what's interesting about this, this is an actual neutralizing of her past. For example, if we were to revisit on what was happening around 35 and I was talking to her about it, she'd be way calmer, way more relaxed. Some of you guys, um, like if, but if I put her in a van with a bunch of TVs all around her with what was happening around 35, she may not want to stay in that van for too long. She'd be like, mm, yeah, let's turn these TVs off. I'm not... Nope, don't like these memories. Nope, nope, nope. And what all, but what's happening is the will to take on responsibility would show up and like kind of pop out and surface around her skin. And so now she's feeling it. That's what happens whenever you are feeling an emotion that's stuck in your body. It almost like it pops out of your skin. It just sits there, just kind of swimming there. And um, But now if I removed it, nothing pops up. So guess what? She's calm, relaxed, you know, just lighter, you know. And, and th- speaking of lighter, um, how do you feel right now? Just ignore the the pain that we just worked on but you might feel a little bit more calmer relaxed lighter how do you feel over there just in general yes definitely yeah i do it's a cool it's a cool feeling i call it the melatonin effect but you know don't quote me on that but um but we could do is this why don't we why don't we work on some abundance um uh i got a few minutes here so let's just maybe work on that uh so let me ask your body where we need to go here so let's see um Yeah, it's it's a it's do you feel safe with financial abundance? And you can probably guess what your body said here is goes no, not not really. Um, so um, and, and by the way, can she make really good money without this being safe? The answer is yes. So don't confuse the fact that like yeah, but I make really good money or I'm already abundant, you know. But that that doesn't mean your your subconscious feels safe with it. So whatever you've made, wouldn't you want to multiply it by four? Wouldn't you want to multiply it by five? Um, I tell people all the time, like if someone's giving you gold, do you want to go in with your arms crossed or do you want to go with your arms open? Your subconscious technically has their arms closed. So you can probably hold a couple stuff in your pocket, but the pockets are going to get heavy and you can only go so far. I'd rather have your arms out and you're like, hey, I'm open now. And people will feel it around you. Like people around you who you work with will be like, you know, for some reason I'm going to buy that program now. It's because they see your arms open. You're ready to receive. So let's 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 work on here. Let's see what what's causing you to not be open. All right. So if you guys are open to watch this, um, let's see. Let's go down here. Okay, this is way too big here. Let me try to lower this down real quick. Give me one second. Okay, there we go. Now it's a little bit more visible here. Okay, so we're gonna go and um, see what's going on here. So what can I release here that will help her out to make her feel more safe to have financial abundance? Let's see what it says here. Okay, some type of uh, energy here. Okay, yeah. So the first thing that comes up is uh, something offensive. Okay, let's see what this is here. Um, okay, so you have a post-hypnotic suggestion. So you guys see that little person there like with listening to music? So, so the question is, what is that? Um, this is very interesting. So post-hypnotic suggestion is a hypnotized statement. And uh, a lot of people don't know they have these, but this can really influence you. I mean, it, it can give you, look, mood th- issues, dark thoughts, self-harm, addiction, anger itself, depression-related feelings. And so um, and these can come from anywhere. They can come from music. They can come from video games. They can come from entertainment. They can come from things from the other side. Uh, like entities and stuff, like disembodied spirits. They can come from another person. So somebody who says something over and over and over again over a period of time, your body starts believing in a statement. Uh, that's why you don't want to listen to Nirvana in Utero, track six, where at the end of it, you know, he says, you know, I think I'm dumb, I think I'm dumb. You know, so if you if you love that song, you'll be surprised. There is a, a post my suggestion here, which is like, I'm stupid or I'm dumb. And then whenever you try to go out there, try to do something, you're like, oh, I got to study longer or I got to whatever. Now your body fully believes it. You see, uh, I think Nirvana is one of the more hardcore post-hypnotic suggestion music you can listen to. Even though I love it. I, I, love, the, I, lo- I love the music. It's like one of my favorites. But who knows how many post-hypnotic suggestions I got from it. So um, anyway, so let's see what we can find here. Um, Okay. 
Okay, so this is... Um, so basically, I'll never get ahead, okay? So I don't know if you ever feel that way, um, Tammy, like you're kind of like, you know, I'd like to get ahead more, but there's something deep down. Do you ever, do you ever feel that way? Kind of like I'll never get ahead? Yeah, I do feel like I'm at this certain point stuck. Yeah. So the question is, is um, and where, where could she have gotten this from? You know, she could have heard, you know, a cowboy music. She's, I'll never get ahead. What? Or she could have heard it from... Um, uh, from fights at home or, you know, your parents sitting going, going like, oh gosh, with all these bills, it's like, I'll never get ahead, you know? And she was just walking around like a little girl with her lollipop just walking around and she heard it. Like she heard her dad talking about how he'll never get ahead or the mom going like, well, I don't have any money. It's like, well, how are you ever going to get ahead? So the point is, is that she kept hearing it enough until her body said, okay, I'll never get ahead. So I'll say, is there an associated imbalance below this? Her body said yes. So why am I asking that? Because there's something in her life that might be um, uh, that might be fueling it, like adding gas to it. So let me just find out what this is real quick. Let me see. Um, okay, there's an energy here. Um, let's see here. Yeah, there's a reverberation here. Okay, and then... Um, yeah, so she has, if you see this little bell over here, it, it's called an emotional reverberation, okay? So emotional reverberation, so this is kind of like a, a very emotional event that happened, and it's kind of like the the, the, the event's gone, but you see like these, these little, uh, kind of like little lines here. Um, basically what that is, is uh, it's almost like the ringing is still in her body, still ringing in there. So the question is, what emotion is this? Let, let's, let's find out. Okay, so it's lost. It's right here. It's lost. So so there's a moment where she didn't feel grounded. You see how that can kind of match with I'll never get ahead? It's kind of an emotional, like I'm not grounded yet. Question is, where is this? Let's, let's, let's do some investigation here. Let's see, 48, 40, 30, 40, 30, 20, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Wait, 8, 9. It's around 28, give or take. Now remember... Um, this could be relationship wise or it could be financial like maybe think about what was going on financially around that time maybe there was a moment where you're like uh yeah kind of don't feel grounded yet uh you know um anything and this could be 29 it could be 27 anything kind of ring a bell around that time around 28 ish like what were you what were you, what were you doing work wise were you starting a business or what was what was going on around that time yeah there, i'm wondering if that's when i uh, I don't know the t exact year of this, but I, I had a, g I opened a gym when I was really young here in Manitoba, and then I sold it and moved to Toronto. Uh -huh. um, so I kind of gave up everything to go for bigger, bigger dreams, right? Uh huh. And so during that, like, and then I, then I had to go step back a bit. Like, then I went back into modeling and TV and bartending, right? And so that was kind of, a, it was a step down, right? Right. Like before you step up. Yeah. So so now she was mentioning uh you know opening up a gym, then moving, and then being a bartender, right? So those are, those are three different areas, right? So I'll just ask her: Is it? So watch. This is really interesting. If we want to have even more fun, I'll say: Is it all of those? So your body's like, no. There's a certain time. So what is it? Is it, is it when you were a bartender? Body's like, no. Is it the move? No. Is it the closing down? You're um, closing down your gym, bullseye, you see? So your body is like a 1080p camera. It, it records everything. And so I can ask specifically, like, what was it? You, so that's why when, when clients give me five options, is it's either this, 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 or this, or this. I just ask your body, I'm like, is it all of this? Or is it just one of these? And the body will actually remember. I'm like, no, I remember exactly what that was. I didn't feel grounded when I closed down my gym. And so, and then, and, and then look at how, is, is it very possible that around that time you started feeling like, man, I'll just never get ahead. I'm, I'm closing my gym down. It's like, you know, so let's go ahead and remove this uh, lost here. I'll say, is there anything else contributing to your, this? I'll never get ahead. Body's like, no. So let me just go ahead and remove this. I'll never get ahead. So your body stops believing that. Now, now I'll ask your body, do you now feel safe with financial abundance? Body says, no, not yet. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so let's keep digging here. Are we okay on, are we okay on time here? Or are you, do you need to take off or? Okay, cool. All right, so let's let we'll we'll just spend like five more like five ish eight ish minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so then um, let's see what else we find here. There's another energy here. Um, 
okay, there's an allergy here. You guys, this is so funny because when I saw this, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like a COVID mask here. <laughs> um, hey, there's an allergy here and let's see what this is. She has a idea intolerance. So you're, you're like, what is that? So here's the really interesting thing that you guys, I wish the whole world knew about these intolerances or allergies. Long story short, if you look over here, idea allergy means it's something that triggers you. We all get triggered by something, you know? Um, but these cause a lot of our triggers, idea allergies. You're allergic to a specific idea. You don't want to have these when you get married because, you know, um, then, you, then you'll be triggering on your partner. So the more of these you get rid of, the better. But then there's also idea intolerances. You don't want to have these either because these are um, ideas that you get nervous about, overwhelmed, stressed out, tired, headaches. So it's like as soon as you touch an idea, those symptoms of stress kind of kind of take you into a little tizzy there. So I'm going to try to find out what is it? What is it that uh, causes this for you? Let me see real quick. Okay. So this. So interesting. You actually have an idea intolerance with, with progress. Uh, is this any type of progress? No, financial progress. There we go. That's exactly what it is. So you, it's financial progress, like to move forward with things in finances. Your body says that maybe you can get kind of a little bit stressed out or feel overwhelmed or um, you might get tired all of a sudden or maybe you feel a headache or it, it can kind of like, you know, as soon as you start thinking about either lack of or you're moving forward, you might be thinking in your head, well, if I'm moving Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, when I start moving forward, that happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so all and so your your body is like like these symptoms of stress come up and there's a reason for that, you know, because maybe you've made you've tried to make financial progress before in your life, but then trauma showed up and then now your body's like, "Whoa, I have an intolerance to whenever you move forward, something's gonna, like a shoe is going to drop. I'm waiting for, you know, so that's so that's what we need to work on. I'll say, is there an associated imbalance below it? And your body said yes. So let's see what's kind of fueling that. Let's kind of look over here. Uh, okay, some type of uh, energy here, um, something mental here, and um, yeah. So there's a there's a memory field. You guys kind of see this uh, cool little cloud here, and it's like a cloud over your head. Well, that what that is is she has a memory field. So memory field means she has easy access to traumatic memories. So I'll say, is this all your memories in general? Your body says no. Is this a, is this a specific event? Specific event. Specific event. Actually, it is a specific event. So it's not similar events. Specific. Yeah. So it's a specific event. Okay. So um, what's kind of fun with this is we can ask, what's the theme of this? It's kind of cool. Isn't that kind of interesting how your body does that? It's like they'll basically say all these memories kind of have a like a theme to it, and your body will label it. It's kind of cool. Your body's pretty organized. So it's like, let me label it like what it is. Let me see what this is real quick. Um, Yeah, it's um yeah, your body labels it as frustration. Yeah. So does that make sense? It's almost like for example, you you uh you're you're moving forward in financial progress, but your body has lots of memories where like, hey, whenever you kind of financially progress, don't you remember all the times you got frustrated in your financial progress? That's what your body's kind of doing. And then that's why you, that's why you have an intolerance to it because your body's almost waiting for the frustration to show up. Does that make sense? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, now I'm going to be, again, my OCD is going to kick in again. I'm going to say, is there something else below this memory field here? And your body says no. See, that's what's kind of cool about the body code. Compared to other energy healing, um, uh, which I have respect for all of them, but the reason why I love this one is because one of the most coolest questions you can ask is, is there an associated imbalance behind something or below something? And what that does is like a lot of energy healing kind of kind of sheds off the top, just kind of cuts the weed off. Um, here we're actually asking, is there something below it that's, that's causing it? And then you can ask, once you find that energy, you're like, well, is there something below this? And sometimes you can go three, four, five levels deep and then you remove it. Now that symptom will never come back. See here, I've, I've tapped out with Tammy. I can't go below memory field. It goes, no, there's nothing below that. So now I'm just going to remove the memory field of this frustration, all those memories where you felt frustration. I'm going to kind of release it so your subconscious stops tapping into those. Then I'm going to say, is there something else contributing to your idea intolerance with financial progress? Your body says, no, no. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this idea intolerance. 
Okay, um, so now the next time you go f- progress financially, you're more calm, you're more relaxed, you're just more at ease, you're even keel. Those symptoms of stress won't show up. Um, so now, do you now feel safe with financial abundance? Um, it says no. Okay, let me just try one more thing here. Let's see if we can, and like I said, I just want to see if we can get it to a yes real quick. Let's see. Okay, there's another energy here. And let's see what we got here. Okay, there's something mental here. And um, there's some there's some programming, okay? And um, you have a despair anchor, okay? So if you guys see this little uh, boat here with a little anchor going down. So despair anchor is like a negative statement, but it's almost like I call it the self-fulfilled prophecy. It's like your body's looking for something to be true. Kind of like, a, you know, if, you, if you're somebody who's a very jealous person in your relationship, you may have a despair anchor of like, like, uh, you know, he's cheating on me or like, he, you know, and then you're always looking for it. You're like, I got to check his cell phone and I, I got to look outside and then, who's that person right there? It's like, it's your body's like seeking for it. It's like a heat seeking missile. So she has one of these it's called a despair anchor. But um, let me, there's a couple of them here. There's, there's over like 60 of them, I think around that number. Let's see which one she has here. Let's see. Yeah, it's um I don't know if you've ever felt this before, but basically this says nothing turns out right. So maybe and let me let me ask this. I'm gonna say, is there something below this at all? It there is. There's something fueling that. So let's see what's going on here. Let's get rid of that thing below it so it doesn't come back. Okay, some type of energy here. There's something mental. Now there's a there's a will to, okay? So a will to what? A will to um, okay. It's like a will to, to, um, to be a victim. Yeah. So there's a will to be a victim. So there was a time where maybe you, you felt like, I'm like, I'm a victim of my circumstances. I'm just not, not really in control. I'm just kind of taking the hits, you know? Um, I'll say, is there something below this one here? Your body says no. Just for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and remove this will to be a victim. I'll say, is there anything else contributing to nothing turns out right? Okay, good. Now your body says no. So I'm going to remove that so your body stops looking for that. Is there anything else that is um, making you not feel safe with financial abundance? Um, now your body says no. Is there anything hidden here? No. So do you now feel safe? There we go. So now you feel safe. So go ahead and take a deep breath in real quick. Um, and um, yeah, so that's kind of like a, a little preview of like kind of how this works. And trust me, I've done this with people where I've done this. Do you feel safe? Then the next step would be, um, you know, how much money do you want to make? How much time do you want to put into it? What do you want to preserve? Um, then I even did another one, which was like, what's your mode? I've had people who are like, hey, I own a art shop. And they went from like 2000 a month to 8000 a month. And it was within like two months. And they're like, what is going on? And the crazier part is that she's like, this client that I have, she was like, uh, I don't even have a, uh, I didn't change my marketing like at all. Like it's just people were referring more people to me. It's like my attraction was higher and I found people that wanted to work for me for a very decent price. So they didn't overcharge me, which then kept my overhead very low. Like, and then all of a sudden just because my overhead was low and people were bringing more people, my income multiplied by four within three months. You know, and um, and so that's pretty that's pretty amazing. And so th- there is a like I said, and then I've helped people who uh, it's kind of funny. I know a guy who works in a very t- top direct sales company, and um, I started working with his with his people, and I never knew who he was. He was way up there. This guy was like in the top ten leaders or whatever. But I was working with like seven or eight of his his his, um, his people, and he didn't know it. But then his income started jumping. He's like, uh, what's happening here? Like all of a sudden my income is moving up. And then he just kind of got the word from below. Like, what are you guys doing down there? This group over there in Vegas. Like, oh yeah, we're meeting with Emmanuel. He's removing our heart walls. He's like, heart what? And then, uh, and then I started working with him. Like he, and then he met, I met his wife and we became best friends. He actually became my financial advisor. So it's kind of interesting. Like, uh, uh, 
that uh, and he really believes it's helped him out. And he also kind of added more to his income. He was already doing very well, like close to a million million a year, but now he is making a million a year. So he's doing very well. So again, the, the sky's the limit with if you just knew what energies were holding you back, um, you can really kind of start hitting all the goals you really want. And so I'm glad T- Tammy was so vulnerable with us. I don't think she said Apple Pen once. So i <laughs> um, just grateful that she uh, was just so open to the session. And do you have any questions at all, Tammy, at all? Or do you have any um, things you want to say or just um, about the session? Um, well, I do have to say that, well, I've worked with you before, and I had very... Um, amazing results before working with you like there was some real big traumas that were released and and again anyone that knows you knows that I've had a lot of trauma in my life and so it was just such an incredible shift and so I'm excited I'm just excited because you were dead on with everything again and that's just crazy actually I believe in this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like I said. My 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 dad was he's such an he's an oncologist and um, very very um, very like a you know very super logical you know and he was looking at what I was doing and he was just like he was just wondering he was like um, like how are you like scamming people like uh, eighty to hundred people a week you know but again this is my dad being very skeptical I'm like dad I I wouldn't even know I wouldn't even know how to do that like there's there's no way I would have that power to do that um, and then he says okay you know what son I'll let you work on me now this this is not like my dad my dad to say that you can work on no my dad was is anti holistic health in fact my mom and dad used to fight about it all the time in the dinner table my mom was more holistic my dad was not. My mom is smarter than my dad. In fact, she unfortunately passed away, but she was a holistic doctor slash oncologist, hematologist. She was like a pioneer in her time. And I just remember them fighting back and forth, back and forth. But at the end of the day, I'm like, my mom's smarter and her patients are getting better faster than yours, dad. And they stay away from her. They don't come back and relapse. So whatever my mom's doing is working, you know? And so uh, I'm going to have to take my mom's side a little bit. But what's interesting is that, um, you know, with this work, uh, I worked on him. I worked on his neck and shoulders. And he said, there's no way you can find the emotion of what I felt at 13 or 16. How, how did you find it? I've never told you about what's happened there. I'm like, yeah, dad, but your body remembers. So, and then he's like, yeah, you know, to be honest, my neck does feel really good right now. He's like, and I'm not lying to you. I would tell you if it didn't feel good, but it actually does feel good. Uh, what's the next step? And I said, hey, let's remove the heart wall. And long story short, if you're listening to this, I would YouTube, look, look up heart wall, 15 minutes. Look up heart wall, 15 minutes. I'm, I have over 75,000 views on there on YouTube. Go ahead and check it out. It's the most game-changing thing you can do in your life. But it, it made my dad finally present. My dad was not present in his family, in his new family that he, he went to. And he told me, he says, I've never felt more present with my family my whole entire life. And I think it's because of your work with the heart wall. And I always kind of just uh, was always thinking about work, worrying about the future, worrying about the past. I'm never present. And when I finally removed his heart wall, he started feeling more. And uh, it was just a beautiful story. So if, if my dad can be open, now he now I go to a party and my dad's like, anybody got back pain? My son will help you out. I'm like, dad, I just want to eat food here. I don't want to uh, work here, but uh, thank you for offering my services without my permission. But <laughs> but uh, but he, now he's like, he's like, anybody got emotional problems? Hey, my son will help you. Know, it's like, dad, please, just I can never just eat and enjoy a party, please. You know, so, um, but uh, th- things have definitely changed now and he, he has a lot of respect for my practice. And so thank you, Tammy, for... for for doing this and uh, thank you for for being vulnerable with us and um, feel free to comment below you know if you want more uh, information about this um, I have a I have a personal email that you can send uh, or some of you guys might be interested because I'm, I'm part of inside out Institute too you can you can email me but if you're just interested about more energy healing stuff you can always email me at compass healing 2019 at gmail.com I'll probably put my email later on in the comment section um, but if you have any questions at all or, or whatever I would love to help out or you can reach out to Tammy and, and maybe hear from her experience I know she plans on sharing this with her friends and family and and um, so if you can just reach out to her and, and see her own experience so thank you guys so much for being on here thanks Tammy again for for being open to this and then uh, we will catch you guys on the other side thank you so much sounds good all right have a great day All right, bye-bye. All right, guys, thank you guys for listening in, and we will talk next time. Maybe we'll do a healing next week as well. Thank you for listening. Again, if you want to comment below, uh, compasshealing2019 at gmail.com. If you have any questions at all, anything that I can do to kind of 
help you move in the right direction. Some of you guys are just looking for healing. Some of you guys are looking for um, like transformation, like conscious transformation and subconscious transformation. Then you might want to learn more about what I do with Inside Out Institute. So whatever you guys need, let me know. I'm, I'm here for you. And then, um, and then we'll just go from there. Everyone have an amazing day. God bless.